Chris with Buddy Pole Antennas, and uh, today we're here in the Rocky Mountain National Park uh, out of Estes Park, Colorado. And okay, I'm going to show you what we have with the Buddy Pole Deluxe Package. Inside is the complete antenna system, and we have a uh, mast here that's just over one pound. It goes up to about 10 feet in height by itself. We have our tripod, and I'll set this up in, in just a minute. Uh, the tripod has telescopic legs, so uh, it extends quite a bit further. Our antenna is actually in this bag. We've got two stretch Velcro straps. And this house is all different components. We have a couple of our antenna arms here. Uh, very lightweight. It's an aircraft aluminum we use. And in the end, um, we have brass studs that we actually bore out the inside of to, just to keep the weight down. In the next pockets, we have a couple of the telescopic whips. Our standard telescopic whip and it extends to 66 inches, about five and a half feet in length. Uh, the base is again 3H24, standard thread. Okay, another another nice thing about the telescopic whips is that we double crimp them here, and this just prevents the base from working loose. And that's important because you've got the, the, the dipole set up in a horizontal position quite frequently. There's a lot of stress, um, the, the antenna can bounce in the wind and um, these bases will eventually work loose. What we found was that the double crimping system and extending the, uh, the interior base here makes a big difference. We have our Versa T. It's the center T for our buddy pole. And uh, there are a number of neat features about this. Um, first of all, the way we feed the antenna is uh, with the provided coax. Um, these are just mini banana plugs at a right angle. and. We just push these in anywhere we want to feed the antenna. This is the center conductor of the coax, the red side. The black side is the, the ground side. Uh, if we wanted to run an element just directly off the top of the Versa T, we can do that. Um, just screw one element right off the top here. And then uh, the ground side would be the, the black side here. Another nice feature uh, on, the, on the Versa T is on the back side, We've actually indented here so that you could mount the Versity on any any type of mast up to about an inch and a quarter in diameter. And we have these holes that go through uh, the, the Versity here and you can actually use a saddle clamp and come around there with some wig nuts and very quickly get onto a, a painter's pole or a PVC pipe or anything else you wanted to mount the, the, uh, the, the Versity onto. Another nice thing about the Versity is that the uh, all of the inserts have 3 8 24 threads, and that's that's standard across our entire antenna. So the arms here have uh, our threaded studs, and they're 3 8 24, and we can just put those directly into the side, um, or put one off the top. And the antenna comes with standard with 25 feet of coax. We have a Velcro strap that's also used as strain relief. These are our antenna coils, and this is the way they come out of the bag, and we have them just screwed together for, for storage. Coils are made from an injection mold, and each of the caps um, on, on each end are uh, ultrasonically welded into place. We mark each of the coils for the various ham bands, and by looking at our chart, you can see that it's always just a combination of these four different colors. Uh, to get to the different bands from, from 40 to, to 10 meters. Each of the coils has a label on the end and an individual serial number and we use that to, to track the coils. Um, if there's any issues, uh, any problems with the coils, we can go back to that production date and, and see what may have taken place. And the antenna also comes with a rotating arm kit and the rotating arms are nice. Um, they allow you to make a, a number of different antenna configurations. There's two pins that have been milled out of the aluminum and they can be placed anywhere around the whole pattern on any of the inserts of the Versity and then just tighten down into place. This allows us to change the configurations of the antenna and we can make slopers and v V's, inverted V's, 
uh, vertical dipoles, any number of different configurations. Looks like a good place to set up the antenna. I'm going to show you how we do that. I usually start off by taking out the tripod first. And I'll extend the legs out all the way to begin with. I look to see if I can find some relatively flat ground. This isn't the best, but um, I can get it pretty straight, straight up and down here by adjusting the length of the legs. And it looks like I need to just shorten these slightly on the back side to lower it. The mast has a hole in the bottom of it, and when we insert it down through the center columns of the tripod, we can secure it down at the base using a thumb screw. Just line up the, the hole there, take the thumb screw, and then run that into the mast to secure it into the bottom center column. You can adjust the the width of the base by pulling this up or down and the thumb screw on the side will actually lock it into place. So now we have the tripod and, and mast in place and I'm going to now take out the parts for the antenna, put the antenna together. We'll start with the Versity, put that on top of the mast first. These are half inch pipe threads and our adapter on top of the mast just fits right into the bottom of it, snug. Okay, next I'm going to put the rotating arms in place. And this is just going to give me the option later on to change the configuration and that affects the, the takeoff angle and the pattern. I'll start off with a horizontal dipole today. Okay, next step is putting the antenna arms in place. These just screw on. Now we have the antenna coils. Okay, we have a, a red coil and a black coil, and that's indicated by the, the color of the lead here. And we need to make sure that we put the red coil on the side with the red knob. Same thing on the black side. Okay, after we put the, the coils into place, we put the telescopic whips on the end of the coil. I usually leave them collapsed when I do that. Next we put the coil clips into place and the coil clip has a small hook. And what we do here is we put the hook on at an angle, and that, that allows it to fit between the two winds of, of the wire. Uh, if we take it and we just put it straight down in, it won't go in. So we take the, the knob to the end of the coil clip, place it down at an angle, tighten down the knob until it's snug. Then we plug the mini banana plug on the lead into the end of the clip, and now we're ready. So over here on the black coil side, I'm going to put the blue coil clip in place. And one thing to keep in mind uh, when you do this is to always have the open side of the J of the hook facing out towards the end of the antenna, towards the telescopic whip. The reason that's important is because if it does happen to slip off this coil turn and doesn't fully seat into the wire, at that point we're just shorting a turn that's already being shorted here by the banana lead. So for 20 meters on the black side of the antenna, we use all six sections of the whip. Just extend it out all the way. 
And that's how we get the off-center fed design. One side's longer than the other. Now we'll connect our coax. Red to the red side and black to the black side. And we'll remove the strain relief here. Put it into place. Now we're ready to raise the antenna. So we just set up the antenna on 20 meters and I'm checking the SWR with the meter on the ASU 817 just using the keyer, uh, mini keyer on the side here. So I'm not showing any bars there which means that the SWR is essentially flat and I'm ready to operate. The other way to check to see if the antenna is resonant is to use the, the power meter. Just making sure that you get full power out. The more power bars the better. And that's showing that we're essentially getting all the bars out, and uh, that's good.